Say, Slick, who's going to be sticking up farmers? You call Johnny Lamb a farmer? Well, Johnny Lamb. This is where he's been picking up all the loose money in Miami. Oh. That's different. Keep the motor running. Okay. What do you want? Manager of the hotel gave us his card. Said we might find a little diversion here. Pretty late, gents. Half past four in the morning. It'll only be a couple of minutes. Number 28, black and even. More chips, Mr. Howard? No, thanks. I'm finished. I'll have 500. I'll have to owe it to you for a few moments. Sorry, lady, no credit here. But I must play some more. I can't stop now. Surely you can advance me 500 on these. This ain't no pawn shop, lady. Uh, are you the proprietor? No, ma'am. Johnny Lamb's the boss. Please take these to Mr. Lamb and ask him to decide. Okay. Stay on my side wants to hot days for some more chips. Well, an old timer. What kind of a looking dame is she? For all I know, different, she's a blonde. Send her in. Who oh, wants to have a cry down your neck? I'd like to talk to her. The last name you talked to taught you how to two C's. For a muskrat coat with morts in it. I sent her the morts back, didn't I? Bring in this blonde. Come in, please. That's all, Saratoga. More and more balls. Mr. Lamb? Yeah. Nice watch. Where did you get it? From my father. Did he know you got it? My father died several months ago. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Sit down. You look like it'll do you good. Thank you. Drink? No, 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 thank you. How much did you lose out there? Five hundred. That all? It's all I had in the world. You don't believe me? It's your story, lady. I'm just listening. Well, you see, my father had a great many business obligations. The sale of our New York home took care of most of them. And after the other debts were paid, expenses, taxes, I found myself here in Miami with less than a thousand dollars. Pin money to anybody brought up like you. Oh, so you thought you'd take a chance. People do win large amounts gambling. You read that out of books. For every come on that breaks the bank, lady, the bank breaks ten thousand. Surely. I know. I run the bank. That's why I'm not lending you anything on these. Not even a hundred dollars. I'll start winning. I must. I see. Excuse me. Put it back. Trouble outside. Put it back. Now. Okay, okay. The three of them, aren't they? Gonna tear the jade to pieces. What are we gonna do? Slap my numbers, huh? We're not running that kind of a place anymore. We're treating our customers polite. Like ladies and gentlemen. Yeah? Have a look. Uh, 
Hiya, Slick. They tell me they've been having a lot of big floods up north. Yeah. They didn't drown all the rats, though. They claim our dice is crooked, Johnny. That don't matter. Now we win anyway. Pay off, Lamb. What's the matter? Ain't they been rolling right? A uh, natural. Now, boy, you put him again! All right, get him up, boy. Get him up! You were here. I kind of got carried away. On the contrary. <laughs> oh, he'll be all right. I hope so. Come on, get home. <laughs> this is like old times in Chicago, isn't it? Well, I guess you're all right now. Oh, yes. Um, thanks very much for a very instructive evening. So, yeah, you are. Well, you certainly took your time. What do you want? I want to go home. She owed me $17.50. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Saratoga, get me my hat. Come on, I'll take you home. Oh, really? It isn't necessary. Would you rather walk? Come on, don't be silly. I'm taking her home. I don't like it. What do you care? You're not taking her home. Ain't the first time it's been out with a blonde. That's the first society dame he's ever met. Society. And inside, hocking the family jewels. Your poison, eh? Yeah. We can't have Johnny tying up with no losers. No, sir. No, sir. I'll tell you what we do. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, has anybody got my idea? Uh, let me think. Let me think. Here's your key. Thank you. Oh, uh, you here alone? Yes. Good night. <laughs> Relax, lady. I'm a gambler, not a gorilla. Mm. Quite a place you have here. I'm glad you like it. Mind if I look around? Why not? I imagine I can persuade you to stay for breakfast, can't I? Or don't you breakfast with strange women? Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> I gotta eat somewhere. Virgin Islands, huh? Well, what do you know about that? Say, I'm learning something new every minute. Could I tempt you with some old Benedictine? Much too good for the sheriff and his merry men. The sheriff? Mm-hmm. He's moving in at noon tomorrow. A mortgage? Only a first. <laughs> I get it. You're going to break my bank to pay off the mortgage with my money. Well, that was the general idea. It's still a good idea. I'll pay it. Boy, we could turn this into a swell casino. Everything high class. And with you as my partner, we could draw all the blue book trade. Turn this into a gambling house? You could own it again, clear in a year. Oh, 
I couldn't. I understand. You can't see yourself partner with a mug. That's not it. It's just that I wouldn't be contributing anything to the partnership. Listen, lady, would I be cutting you in if I didn't need the class you've got? So we're going up. Us? Yeah. Johnny ain't satisfied with a swell setup like this. He's got to have a casino. That's that second dame putting society ideas in his head. Are we going to stand for it sitting down? Not me. This is a free country, and nobody is going to make me swallow that high-class tripe if I don't want it. And furthermore, nobody's going to ruin my life, except me. Ready, boys? Let's go. Now, wait a minute, Johnny. Now, about this here now casino. We're going into that again. We don't like to see the society dame make a sap out of you. What? Now, hold it, Johnny. On a level, though, ain't you stepping out of your class a little? Listen, boys, we've gone a long way together, haven't we? Yeah, but now we're going up. Up among important people. Come on. Not me. What? Not me. You're going, Johnny. You're going alone. Oh. That's too bad. Well, goodbye, boys, and good luck. He went. He walked out on us. Well, certainly, he was spigado. You made it too strong. He made it. You did all the talking. I was only talking to cover up by Cobb's break. Me? What did I say? What did you say? You came right out with it. Boom. Allowing a society day to make a sup out of you. Yeah, and you did it like you were sore. A fine way to talk to a pair that's trying to help you. And now, now on account of you, you big dumb lug, Saratoga and me has got to go and apologize for you. Yeah. Oh, listen, will you please let me say something? No! no. I'm not going to listen to anybody knocking no pal of mine. And that goes for me, too. Jellyfish. That's what they are, jellyfish. They ain't got no backbone like me. When I'm right or wrong, I stick to it. And when I say no casino, I mean no casino. Oh. Yeah, uh, the Roger Cunningham's and party. Roger Cunningham's and party. How are you? How are you? Is he crazy? Oh, how silly of me, Mr. O'Rourke. I've forgotten my change. Could you let me have some? Sure. They paid me at the hotel tonight. It will do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. All best down. Ain't you a little gunny, my lord? Ixay? Number 30. Shall I send for your money, miss? Oh, no, no, no. There's no need. I'll cash a check. Have you established credit here? Say, do you know who this is? Miss Gloria Van Rensley. Oh. Don't worry, Mr. O'Rourke. I'll telephone the hotel. What did you say she was? Gloria Van Rensley, an heiress from the north. She's so rich, she hired me for her bodyguard. Then forgot her dough and borrowed 50 off me. <laughs> Ain't that a laugh? <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> you know, I used to think about getting out of this racket. But when I see all this class piling into my place, I'm glad I didn't. It was a grand idea of yours. <laughs> yours? Ours. I don't no care anything about the policy of this house. Well, they do other places. But it happens that I'm here, and I want... What's the trouble? Why, I'm not through praying. He says the table's closed. He's won more than this table can afford to lose. I beg your pardon. I thought this was a casino. It seems that it's a nursery. <laughs> <laughs> that anything you like, Mr. Crenshaw. Raise the limit again? Sure. That all you want. All on Eve. Spin it. 
he wins, he'll be the new landlord. Yes, I, I know. Thirteen. Oh. Better luck next time, Mr. Frank George. Oh, well, don't oh. worry. my only boy. In an emergency, the house always gets the breaks. Naturally. <laughs> Listen, you. Johnny Lamb runs a square house. That's what I heard. If you want to shoot your face off, go outside and do it. Saratoga, will you please meet me in the garden when you're free? Okay. Uh, Shoulders, please. Well, Clarice Witherspoon. Oh, Clark Baring, how nice. Here for the winter? No, I'm leaving for New York in the morning. Oh, and I've just got in from there today. Too bad. Well, goodbye, Clarice. Goodbye. Goodbye, Clarice. And don't come back. We're running a high class journey here. Okay. I suppose I can finish my drink, can't I? Sure. Thanks. What are you doing down here, between breach of promise suits? Oh, now, listen, Saratoga, I... ain't I... got time. What it take you about three minutes to finish that? Maybe I can help you. I'm sure you can, if you will. Watch me. My uncle, uh, there he is, that tall, distinguished-looking man with his back to us. I must get out of here before he sees me. Let's go. Uncle asked me not to gamble for a week. I've been so extravagant. It'll break his heart to find out that I disobeyed him. There's a way out. Oh, thank you so much. Just a minute. You smell like a yard full of gardenia. I hope you'll be back. Well, uh, I'm afraid not. You see, we're closing up our villa, and I'm sailing for Monte Carlo next week. But thanks again, I'm so grateful. You're entirely welcome, Miss... Uh, Miss... Carstairs. Nancy Carstairs. Goodbye. Goodbye. Glad I met you. I'm Johnny Lamb. Tell me, Saratoga, why do you dislike me? That way you brought me on here? No. I just want to suggest that you be a little more, more diplomatic with the patrons. Well, I realize you had to be a bit stern with the people you used to deal with, but you can see, can't you, that things are different here? We was doing all right and you was in it, and you come along and go to Johnny's head. All of a sudden, everything's got to be high class. You got him to kick in 10 G's to dial up this journey. You're Johnny, and we got a lot of it. Even then, you ain't satisfied. They put us into these harnesses. We gotta go around saying it by my silver. Tully Hall, lady. Like it was a lot of piccolo players. Look, you ain't fool me a little bit. I see right through you. You can drag Johnny down to your park avenue level if you wanna. But I ain't gonna have no hand in it. Get that? That goes for us, too. And now I wanna tell you something. I've already told her plenty. Now you listen to me. I'm just as much interested in Johnny's welfare as you are. And I know I can help him. Nothing you can do or say can stop me. For you see, I love him. Get your miniatures, fine miniatures. All the great heroes of history cut down to convenient pocket size. Get your miniatures. Pardon the informality of one art lover to another, madam. But have you ever visioned a painting more exquisitely beautiful, more perfect in every tiny line and color as this miniature of Napoleon? Yes. And anyway, it's Queen Victoria. A blunder, Benedict. The disastrous effect of hunger on the brain. Can you see what you want from here, me? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, miniature, madam? Not merely miniatures, but masterpieces of that fine craftsmanship. Observe the lineaments of France's tragic queen, Marie Antoinette. Gertrude! Dictionary McKinney! A vision of youthful beauty and charm to feast these old eyes. You prosper, I see. Well, it's certainly good seeing you again. Uh, you don't look like you've been missing any meals. An inspiration, my dear. 
a frosted glass and a bite of food. Why, we recall the many adventures in high finance that we two have shared. Yeah, well, where's the nearest restaurant? Within a stone's throw. Hey, wh what about me? I'll send you out a tray, my man. Proceed. What is the name of this dame we're risking sunstroke to locate? Gertie Malloy. Gertie, that's a fine, unreliable name, Gertie. Whoa, 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 man of war. Whoa. What's the matter? Look. I found a lovely apartment this morning. It'd be fun getting out of that hotel. Is there anything I can do? Why, yes, now that you mention it. Would you mind taking care of Tarzan for a day or so? It's okay with me, if it's okay with him. Ladies made to a pooch. Oh, I don't know. I, I get all choked up. Push you on to the nearest restaurant. I can't face that on an empty stomach. Mac, seems like old times you taking me to lunch. I taking you. Uh, certainly. Didn't you invite me to lunch? I thought I was supposed to be your guest. Oh, I might have known. I'm so hungry I can't laugh. Uh, when shall we two eat again? As our patroness of the arts, I hold before you this priceless miniature. Boys, Lady Luck is with us. She's fell right into our laps. Who is fell? Well, if it ain't my old friend, Gert, how are you, Gertie? Clear to see. We're looking all over for you, like an aces, baby. Make my buddies. Do they have names? Oh, sure. This one's called Honeysuckle. Hello, sweet looker. And Baldy over there is called Bicarbonate. On account of my indigestion. Mm, are they all on diet? No. How about sick of some crackers and a bowl of soup? What, no coffee? Oh, sure, coffee. Oh. Cut a proposition you want to make to you. Soft sugar. Yeah, well, what's keeping us? Nothing. Fly to it. I'll send you out a train. Oh, wait a... Now listen, boys, just so there'll be no argument, you invited me to lunch. Of course. Okay. Now, here it is. We need somebody just about like you to hang a double course on a guy. And you look perfect for the job. Yeah, well, what is it? I'll tell you. A buddy of ours has gone kind of high hand on us, see? On account of his felt for a society dame. Scramble legs. Society is bad enough, but this dame is up to her hips and bad luck. She's sandwiched. Double it. This skirt will take our pal for his roll. With coffee. Yeah, and leave them her bad luck. Put them up. Yeah, well, where do I come in? Everything from soup to nuts. All right. You can go Park Avenue, hot, hot, can't you? Sure. And you can make a guy fall for you, can't you? I have. And when the guy's at the boiling point, you can take a run out of powder just when it hurts the most, can't you? Sure. There it is. And our buddy's cured a society dance from now on out. Well, that's it. Do I get all I can while curing him? Not nothing. You're under salary. We're framing them, not robbing them. Johnny's our pal. We love the little horses, Mac. Johnny? Our boss, Johnny Lamb. What's wrong? Boys, it's off. Off? Does Johnny know you? I met him in the casino. He thinks I have a villa and an uncle. I don't know. I said something about going to Monte Carlo. Oh, no. He'll remember me. A villa, huh? And an uncle. And shooting your mouth off, huh? Trying to spoil our game. I ain't got a notion to... Shut up. Pardon me, Sir Eustace. What did you call me? Sorry, I mistook you for Sir Eustace Winterbottom, a famous patron of the arts. Perhaps you would be interested in this excellent miniature of Cleopatra. No. The small sum of one dollar. No. Mac. Boys, this is Dictionary McKinney. This is Saratoga. Aye. John. Uh, the other two go by their numbers. John, uh, always pleased to meet fraternity brothers. Pull up a chair, Hassel. Huh, Thank you. Wait our chair. And bring a cop to use your arm, my good fellow. Fellow yours? Yeah, we used to work together. The press devoted columns to our most celebrated enterprise, the Roger Pennant case in Philadelphia. Hey, could you look like an uncle? My most successful role. I'm kindly, considerate, entirely lovable. Do you recall the Whipple case in Boston, my dear? Yeah. In short, as an uncle, I'm nothing less than superb. Okay, you'll be her uncle. Why? Why not? It makes a story right, see? Certainly, but it's understood I don't pay Uncle out of my salary. Okay, okay, we'll pay him. How much? To you, my friend, 40 cents. No. 25 cents. No. As a favor, this priceless object dies yours for a dime. 
It's a very beautiful object de art. But if you don't get this object de art off the table in the next ten seconds, I'm going to break every bone in your body! Oh, sit down. Delightful place, Chaps. Perfectly delightful. I uh, can do very well here. All right, go on out in the kitchen. Uh, very good, sir. So, what happens now? Well, Gertz, the exploit, what do you say? May I ask what seems to me an extremely pertinent question at this time? Sure. Under what cognomen do we pass? Say, can't you say nothing without fogging it up? He means what's our name? Oh, Ben Wesley, then. Wait a minute. I gave your Mr. Lamb another name. Okay, what was it? Oh. Why? I... I can't remember. Was it now, uh, Wedgington? No, no, no. Was it Smith? No. Baby Morningstein, dial two, four, five. Oh, <clears throat> no, no, no. Couldn't we invent a name? Very possibly Mr. Lamb would be unaware of the substitution. When all is said and done, he only heard it once. Johnny never forgets a name or a face. Ain't I stupid? Ain't I stupid? Ain't we all stupid? Oh, here we are, dying, and you're asking us riddles. All she's got to do is to go into the chateau and greet him. I'm you. She says, hello. He says, how are you, Miss Guggenschnitz? How astute, how sagacious, how simple. Simple is right. Listen, you fit me out with an uncle, a butler and a villa to impress Johnny Lamb. Well, how's he going to see him? By television? We've got to get him here. Ah, oh, that'll come later. Sure, if I had time, but you're pushing me. I've got to begin here. We well, could snatch him. Only he might suspect something. But listen, we could lift something that belongs to him, then he claims it here, and that's when he says hi, Miss Guggenschnitzer. <laughs> Who's going to do the lifting? Uh, honeysuckle, of course. He'll do the lifting. If you'd kindly lift your shoes from under my nose, I'd be infinitely obliged. Thank you. Suppose you are apprehended. Oh, him? Hey, do you know why we call him Honeysuckle? Because he can climb a wall as quiet as a vine. You can say it again, Saratoga. I used to could sneak a mattress out from under a guy without him missing a snore. If you can, Honeysuckle, our worries are all over. Boys, by this time tomorrow, Mr. Lamb will be right here. Get out of sight. Hurry oh, up. I hope this works. Come on. Now, now, remember McKinney. The minute he says hello, Miss whatever name he says, come on in and be harsh with him. Love thrives on opposition. Um. Somebody here find a dog? We well, think it's a dog, sir. Does Madam wish to see a man about a dog? <laughs> yes, please, Benedict. How do you do? Oh, it's you. He said, oh, it's you. Hello there. Hello. He said, hello there. Very nice, Eve. What an odd coincidence, Mr. Lamb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Benedict, bring in Mr. Lamb's dog, will you? Yes, ma'am. I never thought when I saw this ad, it'd be you. Well, and I never thought when I advertised it would be you. <laughs> Funny, eh? No, I'm a great believer in fate, Mr. Lamb. Of the dog, madam. Oh, just put him down, Benedict. Dear little fellow, he's so glad to see you, he'll probably jump all over you. Oh, I notice. He's really not my dog. I'm just taking care of him for a friend. <laughs> I 
I guess he doesn't go for me. <laughs> Come here, Tarzan. Come oh, here. That little fellow named Tarzan. He doesn't look it, but it fits him all right. Oh, yes. Come here, Tarzan. And uh, Come here. I think it's so important that names fit, that they vibrate in harmony with one's personality. Uh, don't you think? Yeah, I guess so. Tarzan! Come here! Now, now, take your name, for instance, John Lamb. It's splendid for you, but mine... I think you have a nice name. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't seem right to me somehow. Just say it over a few times and you'll see. He's got to say it. He's got to say it. It's okay. I think it's swell. Oh, well, I'm so glad you like it, Mr. Lamb. I'm so sorry he caused so much trouble, but I'll get him this time. Tarzan! Oh. <laughs> I got him, Miss Costas. leaving. Oh, but Uncle, we couldn't catch Tarzan. Tarzan? Is he here too? No, uh, it's the dog. <laughs> this is my uncle, the Honorable Colonel Evelyn Carstairs. Uncle, this is Mr. Lamb. Bah! Benedict, this person is still leaving. Oh, but Uncle! My dear, standing as I do in loco parentis, I must be firm. But Colonel! Well? Glad I met you. Oh, you must excuse Uncle Evelyn. He's of the old school and insists on formalities. Oh, you can't blame him. He's got to be careful. If you were my niece, I'd never let anybody in. Oh, I'm glad I'm not your niece. So am I. How's it going, McKinney? McKinney's dead. Gentlemen, I invite you to the christening of Colonel the Honorable Evelyn Carstairs. MC, MP, and Knight of the Bar. Well, thanks for Tarzan. Oh, he's such a sweet dog. I hope he gets lost again soon. <laughs> I'll see that he does. Well, goodbye, Mr. Lamb. Oh, it seems odd calling you Mr. I feel as though I've known you forever. Call me Johnny, will you? All right, if you'll call me by my first name. Okay. So long, Nancy. Goodbye. Well, well. Well, what? Well, come on, spill it. Did he fall? Did he fall? Well, he stumbled. Oh, <laughs> uh, not me. I figured I couldn't reward the cost as with dough. They're too high class. But they ought to go for this. Johnny, what is it? <laughs> a gravy bowl. Oh. <laughs> Holds a quart of gravy. Very generous of you. I'm sure your friends will be pleased. Cigarettes? Yeah. Car fares, was it? I don't believe I know them. It ain't right, is it? What? The gravy boat. Has too much stuff on it, hasn't it? Well, it, it is a little ornate. Yeah. I figured if I sent her this, she'd have to write me. You'd like to see her again? Sure. But I got a lot to learn. Not about thoughtfulness, generosity, nor honesty, Johnny. But, well, perhaps a little more about this sort of thing. Say, would you help me? Of course. But how do you mean? Well, kind of show me or tell me. I'll tell you. Give me a social workout. Thank you, my little man. Who was it? 
It seems the job Mr. Lab has favored my charming niece with a token of his esteem. Poor big Latin. Wait a minute. You'll notice it's addressed to Miss Nancy Carstairs. You get paid every Saturday night, Miss Carstairs. And there'll be no side take. There'll be a side take or no Miss Carstairs. There'll be no argument. All right, open it. I wonder what's in it. Maybe a cigar. Precious stones, mayhap. Might be one of them diamond headpieces. She once he gave a dame a club she damn. That's the kind of a boss we work for. Twelve spring poems. Huh? Let's rob our book to our hopes. You never done a cheap thing like that before in his life. Kind of losing your grip, ain't you good? Now listen, you mugs. If you were going to a doctor to be cured, you wouldn't ask him what instruments he uses, would you? You'd trust him or you wouldn't go to him in the first place. Well, I'm the doctor, see? Lovely. Hello. May I speak to Mr. Lamb, please? This is Johnny Lamb. Oh, hello. This is... Nancy Carstairs? Why, how did you know? Oh, I just phoned to tell you how pleased I was with your beautiful gift. Thanks a lot. Well, I was thinking it would be rather nice if I could thank you in person. I should say. Today is Tuesday. How about Thursday night? Oh. Thursday night? Why, that'd be perfect. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. There. Who's the deal? Mine. Thank you. <laughs> I got that hours ago. Waiter. Hey, waiter. Yes, sir. Shake. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, let's have it. The whistle was wrong. Okay. And I wouldn't do this. Got it. And I'm sorry, but I wouldn't shout, hey, waiter. Mm hmm. 100% wrong. Well, how do you snag him? I'm afraid I can't help you with that one. It's a universal problem that no one's ever been able to solve. You just wait and hope. Shall we go? Hmm. I'm coming in here for dinner Thursday night with a young lady, and I want plenty of service. Oh, yes, sir. You can always depend on that, sir. Well, see that you have three waiters standing near my table looking at me every second. Got it? Yes, sir. What's next, Professor? Mm -hmm. Give me a cup of dozen of your best coffee. Yes, sir. One. Oh, uh, I'll make that one dozen. No, one. One orchid? Mm-hmm. Just make that one orchid, please. That says thanks. And that says you're welcome. I think I can handle it from now on. You are, miss. It's not for me. Now there's your diploma. Good luck. This is such a treat. <laughs> Let's do it often. Mm -hmm. oh. You're welcome. In. I hope we will do it often, Johnny. Oh, my life has been so crowded with old men. Old planters, big game hunters. Just a steady stream of old traveling men. No, I mean the kind of old men you meet when you're traveling. Poor kid. <laughs> Yes, sir. We didn't want anything. Very good, sir. We seem to have so little privacy. It's a universal problem, any way you look at it. What, Johnny? Waiters. Yes, sir. Go away, boys. You're bothering me. Yes, sir. 
Let's dance. But I love it. it. Takes me back to South America. Have you ever been there, Jonah? No, not yet. Oh, we should go. When do we sail? Oh, well, I, I didn't mean us. I mean everyone should go. Oh, those warm, lush nights. The throb of the tum tums. Oh, to be there and be young. Both of us young, I mean. It would be heavenly, wouldn't it? This suits me right here. If you weren't going to Monte Carlo. Oh, yes, Monte Carlo. I've changed my mind. I'm going to persuade Uncle Eva to stay right here. To a man who's missed as many meals as I have, Benedict, the midnight snack is a special luxury. Do I find that your stomach is in a constant state of surprise and excitement? Mm-hmm. Pass it to you, Uncle retired yet? No, Miss Carstairs. I just took him his nightcap. Nancy, come in, my dear. Ah, good evening, young people. Good evening, sir. I've just been perusing these exquisite verses, Mr. Lamb. You've shown a very delicate taste. Thank you, Colonel. Sit down, Lamb. You'll stay and have a nightcap. Thank you, sir. Benedict, a glass, Mr. Lamb. You look fatigued, my dear. Well, I'm a little tired. But I had such a lovely evening. I'm glad. Now, off to bed, child. Oh, may I say a while? Good night, Nancy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Don't think I'm being an ogre with Nancy. I don't, Colonel. But she's all I have, and I must take care of her. Although how I can continue to do so in the future is beyond me. Your health. From the future, may I meet it bravely as a caster should. You seem to be in trouble. <laughs> but why burden you? Well, I... I like to do anything, I... Same old story, money. Stony? Stony. Oh, you mean uh, impoverished? Yes, completely. I don't mind for myself, but that child, I can't face telling her. Colonel, I... I'd like to help you if I can. You didn't mean to insult me. Why, no. Of course not. You're merely being kind to an old man. For the Carstairs family of certain traditions to maintain, need I say more? No, I guess not. Thank heavens, I've still the family heirlooms. The thing of beauty is a joy forever. It belonged to my great-grandfather's grandmother, dear old lady. And now some evil lone shark will get this oasis of loveliness for perhaps a paltry $2,500. At least my friends won't know of my misfortune. Colonel, uh, if you wouldn't be insulted, I'd like to buy it from you. Well, someone has to get it. It went swell. Wait till you hear it. Her uncle went for that book of poems in a big way. And that one flower, was she nuts about that? Oh, I was a riot. Oh, she's even prettier than I thought. You ought to see her. I'd like to. Perhaps we can arrange it. I'm having a few people in. Let's see, a week from Saturday. I'll tell her tomorrow night. I'm going to see her Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Oh, that's fine, Johnny. Oh, uh, you look tired. I am. I forgot it was so late. Well, 
Good night. Good night. You look different tonight. In what way different? Kind of, oh, I don't know, uh, just different. Well, good night. Good night. Having a good time? Oh, gorgeous. I just love your friends. They're not my friends. They're Lucille's. Uh, oh, I mean Miss Sutton. Oh. Cutting in, John? Okay, Perry. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. You said you were coming right back to the kitchen. Yes, I know, but I couldn't get away. Well, let's go now. This room reeks of tea and lady fingers. No, no, no. Pass me over and look at i will use every bottle out there. <laughs> Bring me a piece at this time, fellow scientists. You say you're finally going the boom, huh? Boom? Wow. The only thing that will hold it is the galvanized glass. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Miss Costa. Oh, Mr. A. Couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Well, I should hope you wouldn't. See you again soon. Yes. Oh, Miss Costa. Yes? That address of yours is 777 Palm Drive, isn't it? Right you are. And make it soon. So long, Lucille. Oh, goodbye, Tom. Lovely party. Thank you. Goodbye, Lucille. Goodbye. goodbye. Miss Carstairs seems a very gay young person. Yeah. Do you like her? Mm, she's very pretty. Odd, I've never met her before. Well, they travel a lot and they just came back to Miami. You see, the family home is here. Mm, I see. I'm sorry, Lucille. I must be going. Oh, Mary, I'm so glad you came. Goodbye, Mr. Lamb. Goodbye. Pardon us. Sure. Mary, didn't you rent the Marshfield house last year? Oh, yes, sir. A charming place. I did so want it this year, but it was rented by someone else. What was the address? Oh, 777 Palm Drive. I thought that's what it was. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. <laughs> The fox was running fifth. Say, <laughs> <laughs> well, better let me have some more of those bread tablets. Take the whole box. Yes, but don't you need them? After sundown, I, I just don't care. <laughs> Good? Mm. Where's your coat? Coat? What was it? Did I have a coat? Well, I'll go get it then. Wait a minute. I'll get it. <sighs> well, they've all gone, but we three. <laughs> yes. And I'm afraid John is running off with me, too. Not yet. I'm very anxious to have a little talk with you. Oh, sounds delightful, dear. We really must be going. It's getting late. Not too late. Come, sit down. No, it barely comes. But it was a lovely, lovely party. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Miss Carstairs. <laughs> Nancy. Nancy, what's wrong? Oh, Johnny, it's my heart. Your heart? Yes, it does this every now and then. You'd better take it in my room. Nancy, I'll go and get a doctor. Oh, no, no, no. Don't frunk a leave me. You don't know what to do. All right. You take care of it. I'll be right back, eh? There wasn't any need for a shower. I had a heart attack. Did you really? So did I when I found out your ancestral home belonged to a friend of mine who rents it every year. That's a lie. I know, and such a stupid one. 
Why did you tell it? <laughs> I don't know what this is all about. Oh, stop the nonsense. You can fool a man, but you'll have to do better than that with a woman. Here, get dressed and get out. Well, what are you going to do about it? Whatever I think best. I know. You're going to Johnny and tell him all about this. Am I? Yes. You're in love with him. I knew that the minute I came in here. And you'd do anything in the world to smash us up. Whatever I think about Johnny Lamb doesn't concern you in the least. And I'd tell him the truth if I thought he should know it. And I think he should. All right. I have lied to him. I am a cheat. And I did pretend. You can't understand a girl doing those things, can you? You've had things all your life. Or I haven't. And when Uncle Evelyn inherited a little money from my grandmother, we came here for a vacation. I pretended it was real. And then I met Johnny. Oh, Miss Sutton, give me a chance, won't you? I will tell him what I do. I, I know he'll understand. Because he loves me. You're very sure of him, aren't you? Come in. How is she? My child, my child. Don't worry, Uncle. I'm all right. This is Miss Sutton. My uncle, Colonel Evelyn Carstairs. Miss Sutton, this is more than a pleasure. Thank you for your kindness to my niece. I've told Nancy over and over again that she mustn't overdo. I'm afraid she has this time, Colonel. Johnny, there's something I must tell you about myself. Please don't hate me. I just couldn't tell you before. Oh. Nancy, dear, lie down. Nothing else counts, except getting you well. I think he's cognizant of the truth. Oh, I'm pretty cognizant of that, baby. Even if I did store it, it won't last long. I had hoped to dispose of Queen Elizabeth's grandfather this week. Yeah, just as I was getting acquainted with the local gentry. I've become... Positively sentimental over this charming villa. It's a bit sad, deserting a lamb before he's fully shorn. Say, listen here. How would you like to give Mr. Lamb one final worthwhile trimming? 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 The word falls like music on these show right ears. And the graphic words of that Bulgarian Saratoga give out. What is it? Oh, my boy, my boy. What's wrong? Don't worry, darling. It's just my silly heart. Take her on, Benedict. The doctor says she must have absolute quiet. But look here, we've got to do something. My boy, we're going to. What? The doctor ordered Nancy to a more equitable climate at once. It's her only chance. So I'm taking her to the south of Spain. One, one. Nine, eight. Excuse me, I was expecting this call. Hello, yes. What? But look here. You assured me that the loan on the villa was practically consummated. I have the documents here ready. That 15,000 means the difference between life and death to someone I love. I can't arrange another loan at the last moment. What am I to do? Yes. Yes. Goodbye. My poor Nancy. Hang on. I couldn't help but overhear. Can I be of any assistance? 
Me, my dear boy, you've already been so generous, I couldn't impose on you. Well, I wouldn't be doing you any favor. I'd be just loaning your money on your property, and that's strictly business. So it is. Let's see, uh, you'd like to leave here as soon as possible. The sooner, the better. I'll go right over to the chateau and get the cash, arrange the transportation, the tickets and everything, Colonel. And all you have to do is pack and take care of Nancy. Thank you, my boy. Thank you. The quality of mercy is not strained. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. No, not plain. Train. Come in. Hello. Send a messenger boy with the tickets and make it snappy. Okay. Johnny, can you spare a few minutes? Why, sure. Sit down. Anything wrong? No, it's, it's just that I decided to go away. Vacation? So good. So good? Why? Never mind. You don't have to tell me. I know why. You do? Sure. This isn't your racket. Oh. I know what your friends are saying, and they're right, too. You only came into it because you were tired and broke and didn't know where to turn. But it don't fit you. It's not your side. Not yours either, really. I hope I don't have to stay in it all my life. I've been thinking lately. Oh, well, you didn't come to talk about that. I'll go over the books and settle it up whenever you're ready. When are you going? Uh, tonight. Tonight? It isn't because anything I've done or... Or the boys. Of course not. I've never been happier. You've all been perfectly swell. It'll seem strange not having you around. It'll seem strange not being around. I've had a lot of good breaks in my life. But I've never had a better one than working with you. Thanks. Oh, Lucille. I got something I'd like you to have as a keepsake. I've been buying the sort of art you'd like. No gravy boat. How quaint. It's by an old master. Oh, yes, of course. It's lovely. Say, what's the matter with that? Not a thing. I'll always keep it. All right, I thought you were alone. It's all right, come on in. How are you? Here's the money. Okay. Anything else? That's all. It's very thoughtful and generous of you, Johnny. Well, it was for her, all right. She said it was generous. Generous. Fifteen grand. Why, it'll be giving us away next. She always gets a cut on Monday. What's this for? Thanks again, Johnny. Oh, excuse me, Miss Sutton, uh, but uh, could me and the boys have a little talk with you? Of course, Harry Togan. Much obliged. Sit down, Miss Sutton. Sir, this ain't none of our business, but we've been kind of looking after Johnny. We're his pal. We're wise to what Johnny just gave you. What are you talking about? We're talking about the 15 grand you just took him for. I've never seen one man, let alone three, who could be wrong so often. You don't stop at being wrong, but you're unpleasant, suspicious, and downright rude, and I'm sick and tired of it. I now listen. You listen to me. If you're so anxious to help Johnny, why don't you stop snooping around after his friends and devote your valuable energy to a real problem? Why don't you intellectual giants really do something? Why don't you find out who these Carstairs people are? Why don't you find out who sold him this and a dozen more of these priceless old masters? Old masters? Old Master McKinney. They nicked him for Queen Elizabeth. Come on, you. Excuse us, Miss Sutton. We gotta go give an art lesson. Uh -huh. There's worth, I should say, roughly, mind you. Yes. 30 cents. Thanks.
Open the suitcase, Benedict. This silver candle stick will serve to lighten the dark hours ahead. You old vacuum cleaner, you. Merely a trifle, my dear, merely a trifle. Now think carefully, Benedict. You haven't forgotten anything. There he is. Are you recumbent, my dear niece? Yes. All right. Ah! Hello, Colonel. All set to leave, huh? Yes, my dear boy. Thanks to your kindness. Uh, oh, where's Nancy? In there, resting. We'll go in here so we won't disturb the child. I'd like to see her alone. Yes, certainly. The sentiment does you honor. These unpleasant business matters will last but a moment. I'd like to see her now. Of course. Still, time and minutes are precious. If you don't mind, Colonel. Not at all, not at all. A whisper will find me. Oh, Johnny, dear, I'm going to miss you so much. I've done nothing else but think about you ever since I heard we were leaving. I've been thinking about you, too. Have you, Johnny? Yeah, plenty. I thought now that you're going away, I'd rather not keep this. <laughs> Uncle Evelyn told me this morning, Johnny, about our affairs, I mean. I don't know what we would have done without you. Oh, uh, then you don't mind if I do keep this? Oh, no, no, how could I? But aren't they valuable family heirlooms? Oh, of course. We've refused huge sums of money for them. But this is different. It's like keeping it in a family. Yeah. Dear Grandma Carstairs. That was Queen Victoria. Why, so it is. I, I hardly glanced at it. I... Oh, Uncle Evelyn! Uncle Evelyn! Oh! Right at hand, my dear. My poor Nancy. You're just in time, Colonel. I'm ready to talk business now. Sit down. Benedict! Benedict! I'm going to give you a chance to buy some first-class miniatures for just what I paid for them. On second thought, I think I'll break it right over your head, your honorable... Oh! Oh! you to frame, Johnny. We was to be in on every move you made. Sarah Toga. And you were getting paid plenty for it. What are you trying to pull now? John, John. Yes. What's the matter? Weren't you getting it quick enough? Why didn't you come to me? Why didn't you rob the safe? Why didn't you knock me over the head? I would have felt better about that than framing me with these fakers. Now, wait a minute, Johnny. It ain't what you think. We never framed you for no dough. Uh, Johnny, maybe it does look bad, but... No, it looks swell. I can explain everything, Johnny. We only hired Gert because I you... I think I took you guys out of the gutter. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll never forget it, Johnny. Well, there's your fare back home. Look, Johnny, we ain't going nowhere. We'll give you the road down. Most distressing series of misunderstandings. Now I'm going to teach you to talk in No, no, you... Say, I'm J.D.R. I'm J.D.R. Say, Cod Norman. Cod Norman. Say, house. And now you're talking my language. Let me go, Sarah. Yeah, Cod this Norman. was a little spoiled brat, boy. You're killing me, Sarah. Killing you? Will you turn oh, what's it on? What's the turn of Johnny? Oh. You ought to be burned in Earl. Cut. Saratoga, this is no time for playing. Pop attention, Polly. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Take the door from now on. Yes, sir, sir. Charlie. Oh, good evening, Mr. Lamp. Do you remember what I said? Sure, but... See that you do it. Dave. Yes, Mr. Lamp. Take the floor from now on. Yes, sir. Oh, Johnny. 
the land. Would you mind okaying my check? Oh, pleasure. Good luck. Thank you. Well, you have this evening, Mr. Lamb. George, take charge from now on. Oh, Johnny. Oh, good evening, Miss Sutton. Good evening. How do you boys happen to be out here? They were thrown out. Oh, I'm sorry. See, we've made quite a few mistakes lately. Yeah, we've only been wrong about 99 and a half times out of 100. What happened? Long story. Wouldn't do any good to tell it except maybe to Johnny and he won't listen. Perhaps I could persuade him to listen. Could you? If you would. Oh, uh, but you wouldn't. Why not? Well, you know, on account of what we've done, uh, you know, to you. Suppose you meet me in his office in, say, a couple of minutes? Yes, sure. sure. All right. One way and another, you know, we've been placing all our bets wrong. Hello, Johnny. Oh. Hello. I'm intruding, aren't I? Why, no, I'm glad you came. Here are the figures. And here's your cut. Still determined that this will be the last one, Johnny? The last one for me in this racket, anyway. You've a lot of courage giving up your business. Why are you doing it? It isn't good enough. I want a business I can run in the daytime. Something I can advertise and be proud of. Have you always felt this way? No. It's been growing more and more ever since. Ever since when, Johnny? Ever since I've known you. I haven't changed you, Johnny. You've changed yourself. Sure. Trying to be more like you. What are you guys doing here? Who's going to say something? I don't want to hear it. I told you to get out. I think the boys want to say something to me, Johnny, not to you. Isn't that right, Saratoga? Yeah, that's right. You don't mind if they say it here, do you? He doesn't mind. Go ahead. Well, uh, you see, the reason we hired Gert Malloy, that's Nancy Carstairs, and her uncle was on account of you. You see, you walk in and you're society and you're no good. I mean, uh, I mean, you was no good. No. No, I mean, uh, we thought you was no good. But we, we always figured that all dames was alike, uh, only maybe they parted their hair different. Yeah, well, we know it ain't. We know better now. And we certainly paid plenty of dough to find out. Look, if we figured this classy dame would take Johnny's mind off of society. But instead of that, she took his shirt. Oh, no. Look, Johnny ain't gonna worry. You never lost a dime. What? What? Oh, oh, yeah. Miss Sutton, if you'll look in Johnny's right-hand coat pocket, you'll find his 15 grand right there. You see, we know it ain't whether you're in society or not that counts. As a matter of fact, we finally decided we'd like to be in society. We never shut up. We're crazy to be high-class again, ain't we? Yeah, ain't we, by God? Well, maybe we could strike a happy medium. <laughs> it doesn't sound possible, does it, Lucille? Well, I... But if you knew these months as well as I do, you'd probably know that everything they said was true. I suppose you're satisfied with the guy you got on the door. Nobody out in that floor can handle it, you know. Well, nobody can make a drink. I want you guys to know there'll be no door, floor, or bar. Oh, but Johnny. I'm going up. But you guys are going up with me. We are? Well, then you just hear him say it. All of us? What about her? Miss Sutton said she's got to leave. Yes. I said I had to leave. Leave? Where? Oh, but look. 
Where's she going? Oh, look, we said we only thought she was no good. That's an apology. Don't you accept it? Where is she going? Where are you boys going? Lucille. Lucille. Where is this we're all going? Up, stupid, up. And that means no more gambling. That's right. Gambling is up. Absolutely. Get you ten bucks, he can't catch it. So bet. 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 Get off. Thank <laughs> you.